Good morning, young titans. Today I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop to create a zoo sign project. So the first thing I'm going to do is file new in Photoshop. And I'm going to call the first uh, project ZS, which stands for zoo signs, one. And I'm going to also uh, put my name on it. My first name is Mr. My last initial is C. And for this project, I'm going to pretend I'm in grade 99. But you should put your own grades and your own names in your project titles. Um, I'm going to make sure that this is set to inches and that this is 11 and this is 8.5. Then I'm going to press OK and I should have a nice white page show up. There it is. Alright, now I may want to use this little tab here to extend it so that I don't have things changing in my background to make it easier to concentrate. So this is my tools area, which is very important. We're going to be using uh, a, a good amount of tools in this part of the uh, project. And this is my options area. And my options area, as you'll see when I click different tools, changes for that tool. So for example, when I'm using the paintbrush, I can use change the options of that paintbrush up here, like the paintbrush's size, or whether the paintbrush is um, what's called hard, uh, this is 100% hardness, or soft, like an airbrush, which would be, if I wanted to make that soft, I'd bring it down here. For this part of the project, we need it hard, so make sure when you're selecting your paintbrush later that this is all the way up if I forgot to mention it again. Um, so that's the options area again, and this is the toolbar. This is our piece of paper, and here, this is the layers area, and we're gonna talk about that more in a minute. Um, right now, I wanna start by making a background for my zoo sign, and the way I'm gonna do that is starting with this tool right here, which is called the paint bucket. Yours might currently look like this tool, which is the gradient tool, and if you hold the button down on it, you'll be able to access the paint bucket. This is where I can change my colors of what color ink I'm using in any of my tools. So for example, being that I'm using um, the paint bucket, I'm going to choose a school color to create a background um, with the paint bucket. So I'm going to slide it up to blue and then choose this color here. When the color that you want lands in here, you can press OK. I'm actually going to go a little bit lighter, so maybe something like... That's pretty nice. Press OK. And then uh, using my paint bucket tool, I click the button, and you can see that my entire background has now turned blue. I'm now going to use my paintbrush, and I'm going to start painting. So right now I'm painting, but you can't see it because I never changed my color. Um, I need to go back to my color and change it to a new color, so I'm going to pick orange. And I'm going to choose this area of orange, press OK. You can see that it goes right to my paintbrush. And now I can uh, draw with my paintbrush. However, my paintbrush is a little bit bigger than I want, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to doubly make sure that this is still at 100. All right, so now I'm going to draw with my paintbrush, and just a scribble will do for now. Um, I might do an additional scribble, so I'm going to switch my color to white. But instead of changing the color, I'm just going to click the default button, which changes my colors to black and white, and my switch button, which will switch the two colors. So now I now have white up here, and I'm going to also change my paintbrush to a little bit bigger. Alright, so after I make some polka dots, I'm going to make sure that there's some randomly placed throughout the whole uh, design here. Right now it's really more than, of a scribble than a design, but it's about to become a design. So now that I have three colors chosen, and I could do it differently every time. I don't have to add polka dots. Maybe I just want to use polka dots for one. Um, but after I have a design made, I can go to um, this area, which is called our filters. Um, you're gonna, and we're gonna stick between the word artistic and the word texture. But inside each of these are subfolders that have different uh, versions of that type of object, of uh, that type of uh, filter. So if I click artistic, for example, um, actually I'm gonna go to distort. If I go to store it, you might not know what any of these words mean in relationship to the program. So the only way you're going to find out is to play with them. So I'm going to take twirl, which I know is a student favorite. You guys are going to love this. And I'm going to show you what happens when I change the twirl, because I never want to leave knobs where they are when I open these textures. I always want to do something with them so the kid next to me doesn't make the exact same thing. Um, but once I play with it a little bit, I press OK, and it's going to create a nice design for me from what once was just a scribble. All right, so that's how I create my first background. However, I don't want to leave it there. Um, everybody is going to try that twirl, and I don't want mine to look like everybody's. I want mine to look special. So I'm going to go to a different um, folder and randomly choose some other things that I can pick to make it my own.
Uh, the next one is going to be Pointalize. And if I'm you, I don't even know what Pointalize does, but the only way I'm going to find out is by uh, going into it and checking it out myself. All right, I definitely like this. I played with the cell size a little bit. I definitely don't like it big, um, but this looks really cool. So I'm going to keep it about there and press OK. And so I give it a nice texture. And then I'm going to do one more, because if I do three textures, it's really unlikely that the kid next to me is going to pick the same three. Um, how about if I go to artistic and how about plastic wrap? Okay, I'm definitely liking that. Let's see what else I could do to this. Oh, it's a little bit too much. How about if I change this? That's pretty cool. All right, I think this is just about where I want it. Press OK. All right, so now I have my background design done. It has three different textures on it, or three different filters on it, and it came up with a pretty interesting design. If I wanted to, oh, by the way, I could Command Z to step backwards if I don't like the ones I just did. That'll step me back one um, filter. If I hold Command Alt Z, it'll step me back even further. But I'm gonna keep those the way that they were. But if you ever make a mistake, you should just use Command Alt Z to bring them back in time. 